Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayan, and I just finished watching Subspecies 2, Bloodstone. Dear God. So this picks up where the first left off with um, Michelle having been bitten by Radu and then also bitten by Stefan being laid in a casket to fully become vampire. Radu has been beheaded and staked. Stefan then, of course, goes in his casket to lay down, take a nappy, when uh, we go back to Radu, whose little claymation demon friends are helping him put his head back on his body, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it happens. Radu gets up super pissed, finds Stefan, and stakes the shit out of him, where he just withers up and shoots a geyser of blood out, which Radu drinks, which is awesomely gross, and then the sun pops up, so Radu has to go to sleep. So Michelle does wake up, finds that her love Stefan is no longer with us, gets the bloodstone from him, and books it. Radu, of course, wakes up, wants the bloodstone, and realizes it's gone, realizes she took it, so he follows her uh, to another town with a bunch of creepy large shadow montages, and eventually gets, you know, to figure out where she is in a hotel. Unfortunately, Michelle is now a vampire and is mistaken for dead by maids in the morning, ends up in a body bag, and then busts out of the body bag, freaks out the morgue drivers, um, and runs into the night. Of course, when she did get to the hotel before all this happened, she did phone her sister and beg her to come, freaking out, saying that she doesn't want to become, you know, what he is, doesn't give details, freaks her the hell out. So, of course, she's on her way. So now, not only is Michelle trying to cope with becoming something she really doesn't want to be, Radu is hot on her tail, trying to figure out, like, where the hell's my bloodstone? And now Sister's there trying to figure out why exactly her sister's running away, what she's scared of. And this is just building this whole complicated plot of the bloodstone. Michelle has it. Michelle's trying to cope with being a vampire. Radu's trying to cope with trying to hunt her down and get that bloodstone back. And Rebecca has literally no idea what's going on with her sister and just wants to help. It's a lot. We also get the pleasure of meeting Radu's mother, whom we can now figure out where he gets his good looks and beautiful voice from, as the uh, witch that was entombed alive. <laughs> Very interesting. There's a lot of her in this movie, so you have that to look forward to. So pretty much the whole second half of the movie is just everyone's chasing everyone, trying to figure out what the hell is going on, and there's blood, and yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything. So my likes, they did step up the special effects no matter how bad they still kind of look. In, the, you know, the opening scene where Radu becomes undecapitated. Is that just cap? I don't know. Capitated? Um, the veins and everything in his spine going into his head to retract it back to his body looked pretty cool. Unfortunately, aside from his physical makeup and then his mom's physical makeup, there really isn't a whole lot of special effects, like gore type special effects in this movie. So I was a little disappointed with that. There's a scene, you know, there's at least one scene of someone getting bitten and it's really more inferred what happens, not so much like you actually see like a wound and teeth being sunken. So I was a, oh, a little di disappointed about that. That's nitpicky. Um, my dislikes. <sighs> there's so much just unnecessary backstory. I don't need to know about this like burgeoning love thing between the U.S. Embassy guy and Rebecca. I don't care. I'm not here for it. I don't need to see, you know, irrelevant party scenes and nights where nothing happens. It's just filler. Like, just get to it. I feel like this movie was an hour and a half and it felt like four hours. It was painful. The parts that were decent just seems so short-lived. There's fight scenes that I would like to have seen more detail, but it was just over so quickly. They do leave the movie on a little cliffhanger type thing, 
And there was something at the end of the movie that was like, stay tuned for subspecies three. So I don't actually know if that was made, but I'm going to look into it. And if I can convince myself, I will watch it. That's going to be hard. I guess I will give this, I gave the first one a 1.5. I suppose I'll give this a two just because it was a little bit better. There wasn't, I don't know. There wasn't as much to complain about, I suppose. Just the pacing's really just not my thing. Like, I, I need... If it's not going to be that great of a plot, you need to make it a little faster for me. Again, short attention span. I can't help that, guys. So, I found this streaming on the Tubi app. That's T-U-B-I through my Fire Stick. I will put in the, descript the description box down below if it is available on any other streaming platforms as well as physical copy. <sighs> so, also with the uh, release year and the director, we'll put that there as well. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. Have you seen this movie? Leave me a comment down below with your thoughts. Um, have you seen the third one? Is there a third one? Should I bother looking for the third one? shoot me a message. Please do like the video if you did and uh, hit the bell for all notifications of my further uploads and live streams. You can also find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews and Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. My reviews are also available in podcast form via the Farsighted Network on iTunes and please don't forget to check out the Facebook page for the Farsighted Network. And um, yeah, that was Subspecies 2. And I kind of hate myself a little bit for watching it, but good night.